Cool. So your older son, CC, is also on the spectrum. Correct. And you were both diagnosed around the same time. Correct. Could you tell us about that? I certainly can. Um, I was enjoying a rather non-traditional but perfectly okay life as a starving playwright by night, but I had kind of a cool, stupid day job, as we used to call them back then, where I was the minor league diplomat at the United Nations representing a, an NGO called Veterans for Peace, which is pretty much like it sounds. It's kind of the left of center veterans organization in the United States. And during this time, uh, the world was starting to notice that our then two-year-old son, Cece, was doing a lot of the same telltale signs that other people see in their kids. Uh, speech delay, motor skills issues. Uh, instead of you know playing with toys, he's stacking dog food cans that we bought in bulk into these incredible pyramids in the hallway of our New York City apartment. So we knew that you know something was up. But when the clinicians in charge of his care started to look at dear old daddy out of the corner of their eyes because of the genetic nature of all this stuff. Um, long story short, he and I were diagnosed in 2000 within one week of one another, uh, both with Asperger's syndrome. I was actually later diagnosed with autism under the DSM-5 in 2014. Um, and he hasn't seeking any kind of, you know, reevaluation. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there we were, the 36 year old guy and the four year old son diagnosed within one week in the year 2000. Mm. What was that like for you to find out that news about yourself? It was actually really cool on a lot of levels. Uh, number one, it was cool from the level of distance because I was a father, you know, I didn't have to take in so much of the me, me, me factors, if it felt overwhelming. You know, I had this duty as a father to learn as much as I could about this, you know, on behalf of my son. And so I could play the noble parent route when I felt overwhelmed by what it meant to me. But then when I wasn't feeling overwhelmed, I would, you know, accept of what it meant to me. And what it meant to me was an answer to a lifetime of Sort of, you know, being disliked by people that kind of thought you were, I don't know what kind of words I can use on your podcast, Rachel, but um, not a nice person, <laughs> shall we say. Okay. And yet on the other side of things, there were lots of people who would be like, oh, Carly, he's a tell it like it is kind of guy. And I knew that both of these, you know, encampments were completely wrong in terms of their understanding of what made me tick but I didn't have an answer for it. And I'm certainly not about to go hang out with people that don't like me. So, you know, I just went and hung out with the people that did like me. Uh, I think that I naturally then gravitated towards the two worlds that I just told you about because of the fact that uh, they permitted behavioral differences, whereas the corporate nine to five, you know, field certainly did not. Um, in theater, if you're not a little weird, it's kind of hard to find work. And, you know, in the field of, you know, where there's dying kids all over the place. Um, and you're part of the, the engine that's saving lives. You get a free pass if you say an inappropriate thing to your boss every once in a while or step on the wrong person's toes. Uh, if you're able to accomplish that kind of work, it really is about being good at the work as opposed to the corporate nine to five when you can be good at your work. But if you don't fit in socially, you're probably going to be out the door at some point soon. So I found my niches and, but I still, you know, somewhere had this understanding that, you know, whether I found my niches or not, the reasons why I was different had to do with defect and had to do with the fact that I wasn't, you know, let's say as good a person as everybody else. And when you find out that your differences are based on your wiring and not on your character, which is what you were led to believe all throughout your life. And which was also a very convenient way for other people to think of you. Um, the biblical difference in terms of how you view yourself. Um, I wish I had the words to explain to you and your listeners. You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here to watch this interview in its entirety. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.